Hi, this video will walk you through module four Excel workbook. So let's begin. Okay, so I'm taking a look at the requirements here. And if I scroll down here, it's basically saying you're gonna create two bivariant regressions, okay? And you're gonna use the Superstore Excel workbook to complete this. One bivariant regression will be placed on the bivariant underscore regression underscore one worksheet. The second model will be placed on the bivariant underscore regression underscore two worksheet, okay? Both bivariate regressions should analyze sales with another variable of your choice, okay? And then obviously, once you do that, you're gonna kind of write a, a, a paper analysis on why you chose that independent variable, why you what, explain the regression model used, some key values, and I'll walk you through the R squared, the P value, the intercept and the coefficients, and then explain the regression formula. And obviously a short one to two page paper here, you know, explaining the two regression models, okay? So let's begin. I'm gonna go to my data here, and I'm on the Superstore Excel workbook, and I'm at the order sheet, okay? And basically what I've done is, to get it started, I removed all the rows at the top. I deleted those. So my row one, it, one row one, as you can see here, is just the, the column names, okay? And way over here to the right in column R is the sales. And I'm gonna go, first thing I'm gonna do is this. It's sorted by row ID. I'm gonna resort this. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna say data sort, and I'm gonna simply, and I'm gonna sort it by category. Subcategory, then product name. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And while this is running, I'll explain why I picked those three variables. I picked those three variables because I decided I want to look at sales and quantity for a specific category, subcategory, and product. And the best way to do that is I mean, I could do a pivot table and all that, but I like to have all the data with me. When I do the analysis, so I'm going to do a sort here, get a specific category, subcategory, and a product, and then do my regression modeling based on that, do some analysis based on that. A lot of data, a lot of information, a lot of records. So I'm just going to focus on that. This is going to take a second here. Ah, good. Okay, so here we go. So now I have, if you look here, I got category, subcategory, and a product name. So the first category is furniture, so it's all the furniture, and it goes down to the second category, and the second subcategory, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I, I decided I want to look at, again, I'm going to, I decided my variables will be quantity and sales for a specific category, subcategory, and product, or I like to say manufacturer. Okay, so if I scroll down here, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select, we're on, I'm going to scroll all the way down, and I'm going to go all the way to Bush, okay? So that seems to be the manufacturer, so I'm going to go all the way down to Bush, I'm going to control C, copy this data, go to my bar bivariate regression sheet one, and we're going to paste this data in here. I got some other data in here, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that, because I just want to I thought about this. I just want to focus on one specific product, or in this case, manufacturer. So I'll pick on a manufacturer. I'll pick on Bush. So let's remove rows two. All the way to 33 here. And here we go. I got all the category furniture, subcategory bookcases, and then the product manufacturer will say is Bush, okay? So all right, let's do this. Let's go over to here. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do my, um, my, uh, um, my regression analysis based upon this data. So I'm going to click data analysis. And so let's hear some data, data analysis. I'm going to click on for analysis tools regression. And so my, what's my Y range? What's my Y range? Well, my Y is the sales. So I'm going to click this selection here. Select R1. 
all the way down to R49. And then what's my input? My quantity, click my selection here, is S1. S49. Now, since I selected the first row, I got to check this box. It says labels. Okay, so it gives us the labels. I like to use a confidence level of 95%. That's kind of an industry standard is 95%, having a confidence level of 95%. But I also want to do the output range. I could do to a new sheet, a new workbook, but let's just do the, this sheet here. So I'll select the range. I'll, I'll put it in W1 here. And then I'm going to also want to do the line fit plot as well. Okay. So let's do the line fit plot. I'm going to click OK. And there we have it. Let's see here. I'm going to, just so we can better read this, I'm going to take this chart, put it, put it right over here for now. Okay. So let's, let's go through this regression model, looking at those as the, the homework has indicated, the assignment has indicated some of these different key regression values. Okay, so let's go back here. So let's first things first, let's talk about this R squared, this number here. Okay, so let me highlight it here. R squared, 0. 0.66, 66%. So usually R squared is a number between 0 and 1, or 0 and 100%. Okay, 0% means, just keeping it simple, 0% means no relationship, bad relationship. Okay, no relationship. Whereas 100% is like a perfect relationship, okay? So this is 66%, which is above 50%. So 50%, you know, it's, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. So 66, it's, it's getting close. It's not too bad, right? All right. Let's look at the p-value. So when I jump down here to the p-value here, and I'm picking our color here, just for now, blue, whatever. And p-values, it's in scientific notation. So I'm gonna go over here and look at a number. I'm going to go the other way here. And it is a very, very, very small number. A bunch of zeros, one, two, two. Okay. Now, if this p value here is less than 0 0.05, it's saying, yeah, this variable has a significant relationship with quantity. I mean, sales. This has a significant relationship with, with sales. Okay. If this is greater than 0 0.05, it's saying it probably doesn't doesn't really have a significant relationship with the sales, okay? So since this is less than 0.05, it's saying it's kind of giving us a thing, yeah, you know, this has a this has a relationship with sales, okay? Now let's talk about the coefficients here. All right. And we'll make this number, we'll just now just pick a color with we'll yellow and we'll do this one green. And let's see what this tells us. So we're saying what's our formula here? So why? Y equals, okay, Y equals the slope right here, 0 0.86.2027, okay, and I could, let's do this. How about this, 0 0.86.0.203 0 .203 times X plus the intercept, okay, which is your, 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 your intercept here. So this is the slope. This is the intercept here. So what it's saying is, is when I'm given an x value, so basically it's saying when I'm given the quantity, so it's the quantity times 86.2 minus 2.59 should give you predicted sales, predicted sales, okay? Which is why, all right? So let's look at, let's just take one example here. So look at why, let's see here, what's why here? It says here, hey, your, your, your quantity was two, okay? So two times 0 0.86, I'll do two times 86.203, right? Plus a negative, negative 2.59, we'll say. So 70, 172.406 plus, a negative 2.59, so input x, which is two, right? I'll highlight this one here. So two here, one and two, and I got 172, plus a negative 259. So 172 plus a negative 2.59, 
gives you 169, okay? That's your predicted sales. So look over here, this kind of gives you a nice chart here for each observation, each of our 40 observations. It says, hey, here's where you're predicted, here's your residual. And what that means is how far off are you, okay? Again, I'm keeping it simple here. Let's look at our, I love visuals, so let's look at our, our, our line chart here to see what this tells us as well. So you're saying, what this is saying is saying, hey, for a quantity of one, here's your predicted sales point, and here's your data. Quantity of two. Here's your predicted sales point. Here's that. Not too bad. Notice, notice carefully the, the, the orange line, the orange dots. It's sloping upward. So as the quantity I sell increases, the sales number increases. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. And this is the prediction. All right. So that's kind of how you read these numbers here, your R squared, your coefficients, your p-value test, and here's your formula. Why? equals your slope multiplied by x plus your intercept, the negative 2.59, okay? Now, so I, I took it a step further, okay? I already kind of did the second one just to kind of catch us up here. So let's look at the data in the second one. So what I did is in the second one here, I did the same thing. I, I picked category furniture, subcategory bookcases, and then I looked at, the, again, the manufacturer bush, okay? And this time I said, I want to look at just this, the, only the central region. That is only the sales in the central region. Okay, so let's look at the, and I already did the output, like I just said. And let's look at the, let's look at the numbers here for a minute. So now look at this, the R squared, 0.86. So what I said earlier, it's between 0% and 100%. This is 86%. Pretty good model. That's what it's saying. It's, it's closer to 100%. Oh, look at this, p-value. It's got to be, like I said, Point, less than 0 0.05, well, this is 0 0.00084, which is way less than 0 0.05. That's a good indicator. And here's your model. 86.2 is your slope plus a negative 23.94. Right, that sounds familiar. Really 86 here. Let's go back, let's go back to your, your first regression model here, 86.2. Hmm. Okay. So the slope and the slope are the same. Hmm, interesting. And then here's all your observations. And we had eight of them for the central region and the predicted sales and the residuals. But wait, wait, wait a second. Look at this model closely. So we have your quantity, your orange dots, and then, you know, this is a predicted and the blue is the actual data in your sales. So two, and then what your sales volume was. But you notice how close they are, pretty close. Reason why we got the 0.86. But look at this one here, a seven. So this is for a seven. Your predicted sales was a one was 579, and you only got 405 right here. So for this specific order ID, why did you sell seven and only got a sales of 405? So that's an outliner. It's a low outliner, okay? So this is how this data could be used. Like what happened here? What happened in this particular case? Why was it, why was this particular order so low in the out, output? What happened here? Your quantity was seven, your output was only four or five. What happened here? Okay. Well, let's look at this last one. Let's look at this last one here. I'm gonna, I did another analysis. You only required to do one. I did, I did another one here for the East region, okay? Same analysis. I picked the East records, but let's look at now. Look what I got here. I got an R squared of 0 0.09, which is not good. Not good at all. Remember, between 0%, 0 0% and 100%, this is only 9%. Look at the p-value, 0.25. So what I mentioned earlier is your, your, your p-value is less than 0.05. That's a, that's a pretty significant relationship between the two variables. This is 0.25. That's greater than 0.05. It's not good. Your, your model here, your, 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 your formula here is your quantity is 27.35 times x plus 147. And again, here's your observations and your residuals. So something's going on here with the east region doesn't seem too aligned because the central region seems pretty aligned. I didn't look at the other two regions. I just picked on these two regions, you know, as compared to the overall. But let's look at our, let's look at our model here. Look at all these outliners. This one here, here, and look at here. You got, a, you got a 441 in sales quantity two, you know, here it is right here, way up here, okay? 
So why is it that way? And that gives us an analysis, okay? That gives us an analysis of why, maybe I wanna look at this particular order. So why was it 441 all the way up there, okay? So, okay, so by doing the regression model, that's how you can look at your data, analyze your data, analyze the model you create, the formula you create, and determine different sales points and whatnot, see how the quantity relates to sales. And again, I specifically looked at a category, a subcategory, and a specific manufacturer. And, and in these two cases, I look at the region, okay? So, and that concludes this video. Thank you.